you're looking at a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon Popemobile, and today we're talking security. So let's go. Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? This is Silver Husky. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll be notified of all the new videos. We do drop them daily. Now today's video is going to be specifically about security features in the coins and bullion that we purchase, along with the different manufacturers of these coins, meaning the mints that create them, and what they're doing to implement different security features, and some of their shortcomings as well. So what you're looking at here, these are the classic American coins, not much to them. And in many cases, uh, they can be counterfeited. So of course, you know, this is not the Fort Knox. You're not gonna have that level of security on something like silver or gold. But of course, mints can try to add other features just to make it a little bit more difficult for the counterfeiter to, uh, to create a fake. One of the early adopters of security features in bullion was the Royal Canadian Mint. And with their flagship coin being the Canadian Silver Maple Leaf, they implemented a lot of features. Now, originally these features were meant to keep things like milk spotting at bay, but what they realized is that they could actually add other features. Uh, they call it the mint shield, right? It's a surface protection, but there's also the Boolean DNA, uh, all of these little laser etched features that add an extra layer of security into the coin, thus giving the purchaser a little bit of confidence. Now, this was then later adopted into uh, different private Boolean, private mints, right, that create these Boolean pieces. And what you see here is a sunshine mint round. And in the center, they have this sunshine mint, the mint mark SI. And there's a little, uh, a little image engraved in there that can only be seen with this card. Now, I do not own one of these cards, but I will show you how they work right here. Uh, what you do is it's, I don't know, it's maybe about a 16th of an inch thick and, uh, and it is almost like a polarized uh, lens. And when held up to that center piece, you can actually see an image appear and it will tell you whether or not your Boolean round is valid. As you can see there, it's kind of hard to see at this angle, but as you can see, it does say valid. And I'll give you a couple other angles right here that you can see it. There you go. There you go. You can see it much better. And when it's turned uh, counterclockwise or clockwise by 90 degrees, you can actually see a sunburst in the middle, which is uh, their, their logo. Now, I believe the Sunshine Mint is actually based out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And if you've never been there, definitely check it out. It's a beautiful place. But uh, here you go. We're going, to, we're going to see this sunburst here in a second. Uh, but they do have some beautiful bullion pieces. And as you're going to see in a moment, it gives you two different images. So there you have the sunburst in the center, right? And it carries on to the uh, outer radial bands. And in the other direction, you will see it says valid. Uh, now, this also applies to their bars, right? So it's not just for their rounds. They add this security feature to their bars, which are probably a little bit easier to uh, line up with because it's easier to get it to go uh, you know, with those angles to line it up with the angles. But yeah, that's a it's a beautiful feature. Uh, drawback to this is you have to have a card. If you don't have the card, you can't see the image and that kind of makes it tricky. Uh, along with that is another feature that the Comsco Mint has added. And here you can see it. It looks kind of awkward, right? From this angle, you can't really tell what it is. But when you see it in a different angle, you can see the AG for silver. And as you rotate it, you can see a 999 for the purity of the silver. So they put this on a lot of their rounds, and that is just a little security feature. Does that mean it's impossible to counterfeit? No, but it does make it a little bit more difficult for anyone who's just trying to make a fake one uh, to, to pull it off. Um, the next one I want to talk about is the Veriscan system. This is by Pamp Swiss, right? And Pamp Swiss, their, their concept here is that uh, even... Even a identical piece to the naked eye has slight imperfections through the the entire uh, piece, whether it be a bar or you know a poured bar or a pressed bar. There are imperfections, so they created this thing called Veriscan, and it will tell you whether or not your piece passes or fails. In addition to that, so they they scan everything that goes through their system. Everything that is serialized is in their database and it's all scanned. Now the larger pieces would actually have up to six sides scanned, which is you know every angle of it. 
uh, for extra added protection. Obviously, the larger pieces are going to cost more too, so you want that extra protection, but you could put it into a scanner and it will tell you whether or not the piece is legitimate. Now, the, uh, the interesting thing about this is that it actually is meant to potentially cut down the buyback costs because when somebody is buying a piece back, they need to, in some way or another, verify that this is actually what they're saying it is, right? You don't want to have to cut through every single one of these, uh, you know, these gold bars, these beautiful PAMP Swiss bars, or even these gigantic, uh, you know, these gigantic 400 ounce uh, good delivery bars. You don't want to do that. So uh, by having a Veriscan system, Theoretically, it should cut back on that buyback cost. And yes, as you see here, make it fast and efficient and virtually risk-free. That does not mean that it is without fault because let's say you get a gouge or several gouges in a bar, there is a chance that the scanner would no longer read it. So that is a risk and just know that as you're, as you're stepping into considering PAMP Swiss bars, but at least they do have that feature. Now, this is a brand new coin right here you're looking at. This is the 2021 British Royal Mint Britannia. And as you can see here, they have a very similar feature to what Comsco did. Uh, you can see it looked like a padlock at one angle and a trident at another. Uh, they have these little raised cubes. It looks almost like a, a cubert board, but they're in different heights so as to make, or actually different angles as well, so as to make waves. So that is a lot of detail. And all of that detail is found in the die as it's pressed into uh, the planchet. And what you end up with is a coin that is just very, very difficult for somebody else to recreate, right? If you have somebody out in, let's say in China, and I don't wanna use them as an example, but uh, you know, as it is, they do create a lot of fake bullion. So you may have somebody way off in, in China that's trying to create these things, and they're gonna look at this piece, this Britannia, and they're gonna say, you know what? that's not even worth it. Let's go with something a lot simpler that we can copy and make fakes of, like let's say the uh, the Libertad or the American Silver Eagle, at least the previous ones, that don't have these security features added. So as you can see, it is a beautiful design, a lot of detail, and all that detail just makes it that much more difficult. Now here you have a Geiger bar. You guys know I love my Geigers. And when you take a Geiger bar, they do have this uh, UV ink in the back, and it does, phosphoresce in a black light. Now, it doesn't mean it glows in the dark. It does not glow in the dark, but under black light, it will phosphoresce. So just something really cool there. They also put them in these nice assay cards and these assay cards, of course, can be replicated in a factory in China. So that's not to say that they cannot be duplicated, but uh, it is, again, just something to make it a little bit more difficult for a counterfeiter to try to recreate this bar. Gorgeous bar, by the way. Look at this big, big chunky piece. And, uh, and this one glows real nice. I don't know why the 10 ounces glow so much nicer under that black light. Maybe it's because the ink is thicker and it just catches that UV light a little bit better. But you see all the detail they put on the back of these bigger Geiger bars? That's all just to make it more difficult. Nobody wants to sit there and etch all of that into a die uh, just to make a fake, right? So they, they make it hard for the person who's faking it. And the last feature that I want to discuss is called the Mint ID. And Mint ID is uh, innovative technology, and there are some things about it that I think uh, are on the right track, but there's a lot about it that I don't agree with. And we're going to talk about that here. Uh, and again, I don't think it's a bad thing. I know that there was a lot of question around uh, you know, whether or not this is going to invade in people's personal privacy uh, with the bullion that they own and, you know, how is it going to like track and do you register it and things like that. So uh, as you can see here, this is just a regular buffalo round. Actually, it's actually, I would say a nicer buffalo round. And then it has this sticker on the back and the sticker has a chip and the chip you can verify right? You scan it and, or you tap it, sorry, you tap it and it will tell you that this is indeed uh, this round, the type of round that it is. And it even gives you a serial number and each round has its own individual serial number. So that's a pretty cool thing, right? Because it's all digitally uh, connected and uh, cataloged and all of that. Uh, and you know, all of them, like you can pull them all out and they all have this little feature on it. Uh, the question behind that, that whole uh, system or the whole feature was once, you know, will this track that you own 10,000 pieces of this silver? Um, and and it, it 
it won't, right? It's not sending out radio signals. And, you know, if you're not scanning them, then, you know, there's not really any way that they can data mine and find out, you know, which, uh, you know, phone's IP address is connected to all of these, uh, these certain coins or, you know, whatever serial numbers and things like that. So it's not necessarily the case. And again, that's not to say that it can't be exploited in that manner, because of course it can. But here's Silver Dragons attempting to peel off the sticker, and I'll let you hear his reaction for yourself. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I've never tried this before. Look at this. It's as simple as that. So this is where the fault in this security feature lies and that you can peel off that sticker and it has a little chip inside and you can melt down the bullion, use it for whatever you want and create a fake made of copper with a skin of silver and slap the sticker back on it and call it good. So uh, in summary, there are a lot of great features out there. Some of them are still in their infancy and there's gonna be a lot of improvements to them over the years. Uh, there are some winners and there are some losers, but overall, uh, of course, we, we do always recommend uh, lean towards silver and gold that you know is hard to reproduce, things that you know are not fakes. And if you ever have any question about it, run it on a Sigma verifier or take it to your LCS for them to check it out. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell.